And on AM Business today, of course, brought to you by Ecobank, the Pan-African Bank, we, we're going to focus on this. Ten years after the commencement and construction of the Bui Hydro project, government has refused to settle its debt when it comes to land compensations. In 2017 alone, the power plant made over $300 million in profit, yet not even a city or a peswa has been paid in land compensation as agreed with landowners by government. Uh, until now, land valuation to know the actual compensation has still not been done. Besides this, the Bui resettlement program seems to have been one of the best in the country. Odilia in Tiamwa in this documentary tells the stories behind the dam. In one of the protracted power crises in the country in 2008, Ghana sought to find a lasting solution to the power situation. In a $790 million project, the dam construction started while 1,200 households were displaced and relocated. A big national problem had been solved till date. In 2016, when the power crisis had reached its peak, the Bui Power Project alone provided one twelfth of all the power the country needed. A month or two ago, I knew we had a problem with the Ghana gas, I mean, supply, I understand the compressor had a problem. So we're calling to be running, and we've been running continuously. And the thing is, we don't just run. The system control, that is a, a department on the uh, grid code, they will call us, look, because they have a broader view of the system. Depending on what is happening in the system, they call us and we run. Maybe there's a shut for the expected generation from another power plant. It's not coming. They will just call us to run. So that is why we've been running almost three units continuously for the past for over two months. It is Ghana's only vast producing plant to improve upon voltage when power is sent to the three northern regions. Since the construction of this particular dam, we want to really find out how this has gone down with communities that were relocated. Exactly what is going on with these communities? How has the construction or installation affected their livelihoods, either business, either education, and indeed anything that they do? That's what we're out here to find out. Resettled communities and the impact of the creation of this dam. With all the social amenities, the new two to five bedroom houses away from the attached and mad buildings, a market, water, schools, and many more. But what does the World Bank say about resettlement? Development depends in part upon providing infrastructure and facilities that improve people's lives and expand economic opportunities. This can be a road that allows a farmer to get close to a market, access to electricity, so hospitals can refrigerate medicines and children can do their homework at night, provide clean water to reduce the incident of easily preventable waterborne diseases that kill an estimated 1,400 children every day, or access to local facilities such as schools, clinics or community centers. So per these standards, the Buipa project may have scored really high. Meet Vaida Donyo. She was resettled from the Bui village to this place. For her, the resettlement program is incomplete without a market. Her cousin in the next house say livelihood programs have been pathetic. It's not good enough to provide houses without avenues of jobs. So when I put the question to the first CEO in 2008 and CEO again in 2018, Alfred Owari, he admitted the livelihood program is long overdue. In first the emphasis and attention has been the construction of the dam itself. Uh, having finished that, uh, make sure that we are able to uh, dispatch, maintain the equipment and continue to work to generate the kind of revenue we need for the repayment of the loan. That has been the focus. Having done that uh, for a number of, of, of uh, years, uh, five years, 
our attention now is uh, still to make sure that we maintain the plants plant properly and continue with the uh, dispatch but also pay equal attention to the uh, the affected people the project affected people because they constitute a very significant part of the project itself you're right having provided the uh, accommodation is, is not the end of the story. They need to be empowered to uh, take care of themselves, not uh, we feeding them. Uh, and so some studies have been made with, with their own participation to determine uh, what kind of alternative livelihood programs can be uh, instituted. The man who is on the ground daily Wombela Salifu Arts plans are however far advanced to salvage the situation. And so even before they were moved, we ensured they had new farmlands where they could cultivate and still had access to their old farmlands. For the fishermen, we've done what we call the needs assessment study to ascertain what kind of livelihood activities they want to engage in. The fishermen have selected fish ponds. And as I speak to you now, we've started implementing that. I'm sure by the end of first quarter next year, the first batch of beneficiaries will start benefiting from their fish ponds. So we are dealing with the livelihood issue. Others have cho chosen skills training. That is supposed to start early next year. To Esther, everything about the resettlement is wrong. So I asked if she would like to go back to the village, and the obvious answer was a no. Papa na de mo hu she da be hu papa bia wa nti mo pese mo san ko back da be back in the am pese e be ko but e dwum o mo se say e pe dwuma esther wants more including advancing the current borehole to a pipe bond water sinde o nde wo kwa ya na wa kosa but we will be pumping the sun e ya de e pe dia o so ma na <laughs> I have come to the site of the BPA project where treated water should be provided in a matter of days. With lessons learned from while well, the construction of the Akosombo Dam, the Bui Power Authority has really taken some cues from there. And one of the biggest is that, well, communities cannot be relocated with just boreholes. And so they're trying to put this um, 2,000 cubic meters of water production per day for people in the community and indeed the workers here. And that means that about 1,200 resettlers, that is homes, will have water to themselves. That's like reaching about 5,000 people, you know, in a day with clean treated water that is being done by General Electric and, of course, um, the Ghana Water Company. Christmas is a few days away and Sherry, head of communications at BPA, is here to make the community happy. James Toreza lost his brother about two years ago. These gifts from BPA are a lifesaver, but like Oliver Twist, he wants more. <laughs> <laughs> Leaders in the community have met to deliberate on where to locate a market. Tensions are a bit high, not only because of the market, but the fact that compensations for lands have not been paid. Nana Owo, chief of Bui, the town christened after the power plant, has already dragged the Bui Power Authority to court. For 10 years, he has not been paid for land he gave for the construction since 75% of all lands are vested in families and chiefs in Ghana. He told me they are running out of patience. The session aspect is also something that is more worrying in the sense that uh, they've taken the land, they are developing it, but there's no compensation. So to have full authority over the land, I urge 
the government and the Bwipa authority, as well as Lands Commission and then any other uh, institution that has a role to play, uh, they should try to speed up. Because they say justice delayed is justice denied. They, they have every all the institutions available. I don't know why uh, the, the court cases are, they are fit dragging. At least they should speed up. Because uh, the compensation aspect is very, very important. Even if they had paid the compensation, we could have also started in one way or the other, you know, to be helping our people. Alfred Owari is worried about the turn of events. The Bwipa project has provided so much social amenities, water schools, computer labs, Christmas gifts, even landing sites, which communities have refused to use, and markets. But perhaps the communities will be happier if land compensations are paid in full and immediately by government. What a comprehensive um, insight there into how the Bui Power Authority is operating and how management is also relating whether, well, it depends on what your estimation is with the communities around them. We hope that um, you will come to some agreement on the valuation as well as the needed compensation for those inhabitants in the occupied lands. But now, for am Business is brought to you by Ecobank, the Pan-African Bank. Make sure that you keep interacting with us facebook join us on tv we have a twitter handle at join us on tv and then you can also be watching us live through our channel on youtube my John Line tv well we have many discussions coming up today the president nanado Danque kufado who for the third time be interacting with the press and in this media encounter the president will somewhat account for his stewardship so far mainly depending on the type of questions that will be coming from us journalists who have been invited to that great event. And ahead of that event, we'll be hearing from some of our own journalists around here. And then we'll be speaking to a lawyer, a lecturer in communications, media law and ethics. And uh, Mr. Zakaria Tanko will be here with us. So we'll take a look at all the things that you need to know. Uh, as far as the questions also you expect of journalists to ask the president, and we'll be hitting the streets. We'll be asking the questions of you, what you expect the journalists to ask. Stay with us. It's all coming up right here on the show.